you are joining me again for the second time this is our 24 minute lesson and this revision for ncv level 2 and the aim here is to go through the previous papers i will encourage you to subscribe if you have not subscribed as well as ensure that the notification bell is turned on so that you can be notified every time there is a new video now guys this is a new channel please send it to as many friends as possible share it with your friends share it with your friends now look at this question now we ended up with uh we ended up in question uh this was it we did question two where we're looking at analytical then we looked at some trigonometry here so grab hold of the previous video so let me cut off here we did everything going up so just know that you have to grab hold of the previous video now let's look at 2.3 given a b c with vertices a is that b is that and c is that now 2.3.1 if a b c is translated that is transformation by two units to the right okay so two units to the right so that is along the x axis and two units downwards that is along the y-axis determine the coordinates of the translated points a1 b1 c1 so this is what is happening here you have, you have got a cartesian plane remember when you're dealing with the cartesian plane you've got the y-axis and the x-axis so this is the y and this is the x so when they are saying to the right they are meaning this direction from left to the right and then they're saying downwards they are meaning this direction so if you have got your point x y here now when you're translating it if they say two units to the right so the new point will be x plus two because it's two units here and then the second one will be y if you are going downwards it's you are going to the negative if you're going to the left, you're moving from negative to positive. But on this downwards is from positive to negative, you see? So that's why you say y minus 2. So which means all these points, if I'm given a, which is um here. Uh, let, me, let me do this. You are given a as 4 minus 3. Now it will become a so what did i say you add 2 which is 4 plus 2 and then minus 3 minus 2 so you see that the new a will be what 6 minus 5 that's why they're giving two, 2 marks each that's why it's 6 marks you see that what about b is the same thing you say your b is 3 4 then the new b you are going to say b is equal to 3 plus 2 and then you are going to say 4 minus 2 you are adding 2 separating 2 in all of them so your b is equal to what 5 and uh, 2 apologies guys for the background noise and i couldn't help it at this stage just bear with me and then c was um what is c 5 negative 2 so it's 5 negative 2 and then when you move to the new c after translation is 5 plus 2 and it's minus 2 minus 2 so what is your new c it becomes 7 and negative 4 just check that with the calculator minus 2 minus 2 is negative 4 so these are the new translated points you get six marks not difficult guys now it says determine the coordinates of four of a four minus three if it is reflected about the uh, about y is equal to negative x now let me come back here to the cartesian plane now when you are reflecting about y is equal to negative x i just want to make it a little bit here like look at this so when you are reflecting about y is called to negative x so we have here to say this is y this is x 
I can have a line y is equal to x. This is the line called y is equal to x. This line. It's y is equal to x. Meaning, whatever was y has become x. Whatever was x become y. So if you have coordinates here, let's say the coordinates, so I had coordinates as x, y. Now, since y has become x, the coordinates now are y, x. I think that. So if I had a as 4, 3, a as 4 minus 3, the new a will be uh, minus 3 and 4. Right. So what has changed? You just interchange. But now, if I'm reflecting by the line y is called minus x, it's like this. This is the line y has become negative x. So where there is y, it is now negative x. So if I got my point A as 4 minus 3, so my new A will become negative 3, 4. If it was the normal y, this one is y is equal to x. But now if I've got y is equal to negative x, my new A is further transformation. So where there is y, remember these are the coordinates y x y these are x y now right it is interchanged so now y is equal to negative um negative x so what was my x the original is my x y is this one right so the the y has become what negative x and x is 4 so this 4 will become negative 4 so the answer becomes negative 3 which was your, your your y, it doesn't change, but x has become negative x, which is now negative 4. Because it was positive 4, it will transform into negative 4. Okay, so that is that part. Alright, and then looking at uh, this part now to... Uh, finalize and finish two point question two a rectangular prism has a length of 15 centimeters breadth of 12 centimeters and a height of 30 centimeters so whenever they are dealing with this section now where are we we are looking in the formulas we are looking at this part now it's quite a long list area of the square the rectangle the triangle the circle the c is the circumference the perimeter of a circle, area of a parallelogram, area of a hexagon, area of a hexagon, the cylinder, the volume, uh, base times the perpendicular height, and then uh, the volume of a cylinder here, total surface area of a triangular prism. So you need to familiarize yourself th with this. So they give an equation in that. Now here they are doing a rectangular prism. Now calculate the surface area of the rectangular prism. So let me see if we have... The surface area of the prism here which is not there but I just want to show you um, total surface area of it this is triangular prism see it gives height of prism times base times two okay this is triangular I wanted the rectangular prism it's not given but it's not a transmesh when you're talking about the rectangular prism the first things that you need to know the area is also not complicated. Look at this. You have to find the area of, for example, this side. See this shaded part? We're going to find the area of that shaded part. So now to say what is the area, this is, uh, picture it as a, a rectangle. So we have got this side being 12 and the height they're saying is 30. Now you know that area is equal to length times width, which is the formula area is length times width, which is 12 times 30. I know you want to say breadth, but I'm just maintaining that. And then it will give us that formula. But now there is something that I want to remind you. Remember there is the back side of this shape. There is the front and the back. So area total area of this is 2 times 12 times 30. Let me leave it like that. I need that. Because at the end, I, they say total, calculate the surface area. I need to find the total one. Alright. 
So having done that, let's look at the other side. The other side is the top one. If I'm to find the area of this top, the method is the same. I've got here, uh, if I use a different mark, what do I have? I've got sides. Um, as you can see, this is my 15. Uh, I need something much visible. Let me use it right again. This is 15, and then this side is 12. So my area is still length times breadth, which is equal to length is 15 times 12. But remember, there is the top and there is the bottom side at the bottom of this. So there are two sides. So I multiply by 2. So a t again is equal to 2 times 15 times 12. I hope you are able to see what I'm trying to do there. Because there are two of, uh, of these. Let me undo. I don't want to erase it. So it's 2 times 15 times 12. So this is another area. And then lastly, it is my shaded part here. So this one, this is the area. Now area is length times breadth. So area is equal to already is labeled, which is 30 times 12. But there is another side here, which is AT is equal to 2 times 30 times 12. Now if I want to find the total area, is equal to you have to be adding all these i'm not going to write it but i'm going to use a calculator just for that so i will have two times the first one is 15 times 12 15 times 12 plus then we're on the bottom one here which is two times 12 times 30 plus and then two times 30 uh, times 12 you need to be writing this down this working is important. So it's 1,152 centimeters, remember, but you square. Area is in square centimeters. All right. So that is that part. So you get three marks. Then the next one says calculate the volume of the rectangular prism. Now, I think volume is given. Uh, volume of the rectangular prism is also not given here. But um, it's also a reminder when you calculate the volume, remember V is equal to length times breadth times height. That's why it's 2 marks, which is 15 times breadth, which is 12. We can make it 12 times height, which is 30. Even if you mix it up, it doesn't matter. The key thing is to multiply those three numbers. The arrangement is not a problem. 15 times 12 times 30. 30 all right equal to 5400 so this is 30 it's volume be careful with the units now it's volume is centimeters but it's cubic centimeters all right now last question here it's got uh four marks it says a farmer wants to a farmer plants his wheat fields in crop cycles he uses a water will irrigation system to water in a circular motion from the center of the circle planting in crop cycles means his crops receive a more even distribution of water so he's planting and then there is this thing they're saying 0 0,4 kilometers here and then it it forms a crop cycle it says if the water sprinkler stretch 0 0,4 kilometer from the center of the crop cycle to its perimeter what is the area of the circle that can cover in square kilometers so we are here area of the circle area of circle is pi r squared see and then when you come to that part now it's actually simple that's why it's two marks to say a is equal to pi r squared which is pi times bracket 0 0,4 squared and then you find the answer for that pi r squared so what you have is shift pi bracket 0 0,4 squared and then what you have in three decimal places 0 0,503 shift setup 6 and 3 which is sd 0 0,503 so 0 
comma 503 now kilometer square they say in that so don't forget to leave the units in that and then if the farmer walks around the perimeter of the crop cycle perimeter how far will he walk perimeter is simple the circumference so you're using this formula c is 2 pi r that's what they are trying to do there so you have got now c in this case is 2 pi r they wanted you to know that the circumference and perimeter are the same so c is equal to 2 times pi times 0 comma 4 that's that's it and then uh, at that stage you have got 2 times pi times 0 comma 4 and remember three decimal places is key which is 2 comma 5 1 3 2 there is 2 comma 5 1 3 2 comma 5 1 3 what kilometers so guys that is that 32 marks as i say these are two parts videos um we have now come to the end of our lesson here so if you were um, uh, revising question two you you should have done this part in this video we have revised revised up to 2.3 in the previous video that's when i did question 2.2 as well as question 2.1 in total is 32 marks good marks now join me in the next session where i will be now looking at question number three and it will be question three here as you can see it's again trigonometry i'll cover that again i'm covering trick here i'll cover this section and then i'll cover the angles of elevation here it will be out of 28 marks so just join me in the next coming videos you'll definitely find these i will post these as soon as they are ready we have come to the end of our lesson remember to subscribe and ensure that the notification bell is turned on so that you are notified every time there's a new video that we're posting we have come to the end of our lesson thank you